welcome to our special investors briefing on the partnership between OpenPay and First Group. My name is Juliana Rodley and I'll be hosting this session. Presenting today will be Michael Idle, the CEO and Managing Director of OpenPay, and Klaus Bartok, who is the Managing Director and CEO of First Group. Michael and Klaus will be presenting for around 20 minutes each, and then we'll move through to questions and answers. If you would like to ask a question, we would ask that you would enter those questions in the bottom of the Zoom screen in the Q&A function. We'll try and get through as many of the questions as we can in the time we have available. Now, we'll also be recording this session today to share with you online after the event on both the OpenPay and First Group websites. So starting off today, I will ask Michael Idol to come online. Michael, I'd love you to join us now, share your screen, and we'll get started. Juliana, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for making time to attend today's presentation. Last year, we announced our key strategic partnership and revenue share agreement with our co-host today, First Group. This First Mover partnership is, is built around creating a positive user experience for healthcare practices and their patients across every touch point of the patient experience from booking to payment. This is a field which OpenPay and First Group feel equally passionate about, putting the patient and healthcare provider first. So it's a great pleasure to present together to investors today. We have prepared a few slides for you, which Klaus and I will walk you through. They will bring to life what makes our partnership so special and hopefully lead to an engaging Q&A. To set the scene on slide two. For our partnership, OpenPay and First Group are leveraging our platform capabilities to bring better solutions to people and pets. Innovative fintech and health tech, if you like, defining and delivering a new way to provide patients with physical and financial access to the healthcare services they need and deserve. The alignment be between both parties has come from first an uncompromised focus on putting the patient at the center of everything that we do. Second, strong and flexible technical capabilities across multiple platforms. And third, market leading, market leading positions in key healthcare segments in which both parties can make a real difference. And we do this for people, pets and practices by integrating My Health First and Pet Yeti with OpenPace platform. Moving now to page three, the session today will be split into three main sections. First, I will cover our view of how healthcare costs can be managed in a smarter way and built to benefit both patients and healthcare providers. It will then, I will then hand over to Klaus, who will cover the patient experience and the results which we have observed from our partnership to date. And then we will focus together on our way forward and next steps before moving into the Q&A session. We will talk about what OpenPay can bring to healthcare, both generally and through this partnership with First Group. But before we hone in on healthcare, I'm aware we have a mixed audience today. So perhaps a few points to introduce OpenPay more generally. On slide five, I still often get the question what differentiates OpenPay from our main competitors. This page gives the answer in brief. On the left, we provide a better way to pay with our Buy Now, Pay Smarter product in B2C, kind of the, the Buy Now, Pay Later as we know it. And we do this in verticals which matter to people, including health and veterinary, which we will discuss today, but also areas like automotive, home improvement, education, and sports memberships. What distinguishes us in the Buy Now, Pay Later sector? It's our plans, which are higher in value and longer in duration than most of our peers. This has meant we have been able to carve out an attractive, increasingly recognized place for ourselves in what is otherwise an increasingly busy buy now, pay later market. And secondly, on the right side of the page, enterprise merchants can manage trade accounts for their business customers end to end using our B2B product. OP Pro, which has had a name upgrade from OpenPay for Business, is a fully digitized software as a service platform. Woolworth are the first to have started using it at scale, and we are working hard right now to convert additional B2B opportunities onto this innovative platform. Moving to slide six, here you will find the graphical illustration of our differentiated Buy Now Pay Later product, which is 
in simple terms, larger, longer, and customized. Many of our competitors operate in the pay in four space. That's literally two month payment plans with four fortnightly installments, providing a what is essentially cost-free short-term credit for, I often say t-shirts and tennis shoes in fast moving retail. Open pay is positioned as the budgeting tool to use for life's more important purchases and experiences. You can use our plans across meaningful areas of your life. Pets, medical treatments, your son's braces, your daughter's soccer, soccer club um, membership, that's unexpected car service, mom's evening classes in accounting, and the refurbishment of the family's home. We are proudly empowering finance savvy people to be smart about their money and spread payments over a longer period of time and providing them with greater financial control, transparency, payment flexibility, and easy ways to budget, which is what customers are looking for and what credit cards have greatly failed to deliver to them. Moving to slide seven, let's look at some of the recent healthcare trends and let me share some stats. A recent brand research report highlighted that 39% of patients had expressed interest in paying for healthcare services with buy now, pay later. Healthcare providers are missing a key opportunity if they haven't considered solutions to the bill shock that is common for patients when treatments are unexpectedly required and unexpectedly expensive. Let me put forward a use case which you will all be familiar with. You go to your dentist for a routine clean what it ends with is that your dentist diagnoses a major issue with one of your teeth and that it needs to come out. As the best course of action and long-term solution, your dentist recommends a dental implant, which is a bill shock of several thousand dollars, which you haven't budgeted for. What are the options? Putting it on a credit card, probably not great with potentially quite heavy interest burdens further down the track or to have a crown instead would be lower cost admittedly, but it's likely to have a much shorter lifespan. This is where and when open pay comes into play and helps solving the problem. The best medical treatment to affordable financial terms as you can spread the investment in your health over a longer period of time. So what's in for the healthcare providers and the patient? For the healthcare providers, this is an opportunity to increase, as we say, patient conversion and loyalty, which means the right solution to the problem and one which delivers better health outcomes, drives long-term patient satisfaction and delivers a good commercial outcome. For the patient, we can help to reduce the financial barriers to access recommended healthcare treatments. This can result in earlier care, which we know can have positive outcomes and it can enable you to have the premium care result rather than a stopgap treatment. As highlighted on slide eight, OpenPay has been operating in the healthcare space for many years. In fact, it's one of our core areas of focus. In our approach to healthcare, we look at the needs of the market holistically and consider all relevant stakeholders, practices and clinics, and people being patients themselves or taking care of their pets. We are currently working with practices across the areas of, as you see here, dental, allied health, health products, and veterinary. And as you may have seen, last week, we also announced to offer open pay on a trial basis in hospitals, providing self-funded patients in this sector with access to high quality care for elective surgeries in a private hospital setting. Our strong footprint in these health sub-verticals greatly coincides with First Group's strong market presence with their two market-leading health platforms, My Health First and PetEAT. So ultimately what this partnership with First Group means is that the two market-leading innovators, a FinTech and a health tech company, have combined their strong industry expertise, their passion for the patient, market presence and networks to provide patients with ubiquitous access to the right treatment for them. Klaus, I guess there's something to add from your side. Yeah, thanks, Michael. So look, it's really important to note that across those sectors, there are around um, 50,000 possible practices that can use these services. And our company currently has around 12% of that market. We're kind of quite strong players in dental allied, um, the pharmacy space. Now with hospitals, as you would note from our deal with St. Vincent's, 
um, with specialists and obviously with Pet Yeti in the pet market. And so, you know, this really uh, fostered and and the strong alignment between OpenPay and, and First Group is really what's allowed the progression of what we're doing here today in this partnership. Over to you, Michael. Thanks, Dos. And we're really making one plus one three with our combined strength. On slide nine, thank you. When, when we kicked off our partnership with First Group in September last year, we initially focused on rolling out open pay to about 60 healthcare practices, which were members of First Group's myhealthfirst.com.au platform. We were planning on having an initial six month trial. In fact, it's gone so well that Klaus and I decided to take our combined offering ahead of time not only to now thousands of practices across the human-focused My Health First platform, we will now also launch our offering into Pet Yeti, which of course focuses on our furry friends. Through the trial period, we have discovered an extraordinary alignment, I would say, of our vision and values. First and foremost, as I said before, the patient experience is key. What drives us is to offer patients the ability to access the best care and give them more time to pay for it. Under our plans, unlike a credit card, there is no interest. We are transparent about our fees and these are all communicated directly to the patient upfront. Practices through the combination of the My Health First and Pediatri platforms can access new patients and help them to get the care they need when they need it. We are also promoting the My Health First and Pediatri services to existing OpenPay customers. And we learned through a recent payments report that healthcare providers' biggest opportunity to retain patients and recapture revenue is in offering touchless digital payment experiences. 54% of people want to manage their upcoming provider payments digitally. Payment notification and automated charges remove the burden from medical staff to issue and track outstanding bills, allowing them to focus on what the patient really needs which is care and excellent health service. I think we both love the healthcare space and think we have a fairly unique offering together. And kind of combining our strength, we can take our services to patients and pets at scale, mutually introduce patients and healthcare providers and grow our businesses in our combined health ecosystem. I will now invite Klaus to say a few extra words on, on the partnership before he moves then on to talking about the patient journey and the results of um, that partnership so far. Over to you, Klaus, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Michael. So look, it's really important to note that the alignment between our two businesses in the interests of patients and healthcare providers is really quite extraordinary. And you'll see that in some of the subsequent slides that I'll be talking to in terms of what the pilot has achieved. What we're now working on, of course, is the next phase of that growth and development of what we're doing together, bringing more of our combined services to more healthcare providers, and importantly, to more patients who clearly value the service that we're jointly providing to market. And so I know that you'll find the slides that I'll be talking to later in terms of the results from the pilot particularly interesting. So let's um, move on to the kind of hard facts. So as we've talked about, it's both our myhealthfirst.com.au marketplace and our Pet Yeti um, platform for the vet services market is really what we're doing here. The pilot phase was focused originally on My Health First. Those findings have now allowed us to begin to prepare and roll out the same capability to our Pet Yeti platform, which we're really looking forward to, um, to doing. Next slide. All right, so look, here are the kind of key challenges that patients and practices face today when dealing with access to healthcare services. The first is that um, patients don't actually know what payment choices are available at their upcoming healthcare practice until at the point when they're required to make payment. Um, if they're not already now a member of OpenPay, then they're not going to be in a position to take advantage of that option. So it's, it's too late in that journey. Um, open pay members themselves who are looking for healthcare businesses um, can't easily find those providers. And so the myhealthfirst.com.au marketplace is providing an easy and convenient way for members to be able to um, find and schedule appointments with open pay um, um, providers. And lastly, um, you know, practices themselves 
are so busy today doing the things that they're doing that being able to um, let their patients know in advance of their consult that these payment options are available to them, these are payment options that these practices have signed up to, is something that they struggle to do. And so doing this digitally through a platform like ours just makes simple sense for them and makes the journey quite easy. Next slide, thanks. So what are the key objectives of the pilot program that we set out from the beginning? The first is obviously to see, um, would, we, would what we're doing result in an increased number of um, open pay transactions um, through better patient education? And would we see increased uh, number of patients and business to our healthcare providers? What we implemented in terms of how it works is effectively what we're doing through our platform is we're raising the awareness by patients who are scheduling their appointments online with the practice that open pay is an available payment option for, for them at their upcoming consult. Importantly, in the booking workflow, we're also um, optionally um, offering the opportunity for that patient to select that they intend to use OpenPay at the upcoming consult. And then through our deep integrations with the software that our practices use, we're embedding that information into their appointment book so that that practice now knows and their front desk staff now knows that at the upcoming consult, this patient has indicated they intend to use OpenPay. That also makes it easy for the, pay, for the practice now, for their front desk staff, to prompt the patient at, at the time they come to make their payment to ask if they would now like to complete their payment using OpenPay. Particularly important, as you will hear, in relation to, and as you heard from Michael earlier, in relation to accepting key care plans. So you go to a dentist, you learn that there's now an important procedure required, but you're now struggling with how to fund that. And certainly OpenPay provides a good vehicle and option for that, um, for that to be taken. In addition, through the platform, we're also educating patients about the OpenPay product. And we're doing that by providing key content and information they can click through to, to learn more about OpenPay and how they might want to consider it for this purpose. Um, and lastly, for those who aren't members, and you'll find the statistic I'll talk about later particularly interesting, uh, for those who aren't currently an OpenPay member, um, the, the, all, the online process also facilitates and guides them through a process to optionally sign up should they wish to do so. Next slide, thanks. So specifically, though, what are we doing and what have we been doing in the pilot? <clears throat> so the first is that um, as I mentioned on the on the myhealthfirst.com.au marketplace, during the search results when looking for dentists or optometrists, um, the fact that certain practices offer this buy now pay later service um, becomes um, visible and uh, and available to the practice uh, to the patient. I beg your pardon. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that. Each of our customers, each of our practices have online um, practice profile pages. Uh, these are pages that provide more detail about the services the practice provides and various options. Included in those profile pages, they have access to what payment options this practice offers. And so they can also, in that location, see that a practice offers um, open pay. Um, the next is that during the booking workflow, so when you first select on an appointment that you wish to schedule for those practices who, often, who offer open pay, we offer the patient an option to identify and select um, whether they intend to use or have interest in using open pay at the upcoming consult. You can see that in the kind of little box at the bottom middle of this um, slide as an example of that. Um, the, the patient then clicks on that they intend to use open pay. They're then prompted with a series of questions. And one of those questions is, you know, do you currently have an open pay account? Um, if you do, then we simply pass them through to schedule an appointment. If they don't, we do something else as well. And I'll talk a bit about what that is. Um, the next is once you've completed your appointment, we remind the patient again that the practice offers open pay um, that's available to them to use at the upcoming consult. Um, once you've confirmed your appointment, the patient also receives obviously a confirmation email confirming that their appointment has been confirmed and providing them with the details. But, they, but those who are nominated that they intend to use open pay at the upcoming consult 
also receive a further additional email, which helps introduce, um, again, the open pay to them, the fact that this practice offers it and provides them with, again, more information, more education to allow them to self-opt in and self-decide whether they'd like to go further and either sign up to open pay if they aren't already, or just reminding them that they're an open pay member and that that option is available to them. And in addition, if a patient has any queries or questions, then there are places they can click on where they can click through to key patient education pages um, all the time. But the whole time here, what's critical is the patient is in control. They choose to very clearly and transparently opt into doing the things they choose to do. And they make those choices even when they're at the practice. At no point is a patient ever obligated or pressured into doing anything at all. Um, they are entirely always in control. And that's really consistent with the values in the way in which our business and practice operates and also the way in which we know open pay operates, which is why our partnership is so powerful in the way that we've been working together. Next slide. So what was achieved in phase one? Well, we had expectations from the outset of um, the number of additional um, plans, as they're called, or trans open pay transactions that would occur at a practice. And the results far exceeded our expectations. And that obviously has uh, contributed to Michael and I deciding that we really need to just get on with this um, three months into a six month pilot. And the results were so strong that it just made sense to, to move more quickly in the path that we were headed in. Um, secondly, and really interestingly, um, you know, practices saw a significant increase in the number of new patients booking an appointment. And one of the more interesting statistics that we captured during the process is that of those patients who selected and identified that they intended to use OpenPay at the upcoming Sonsalt, 83% were not already members of OpenPay. That's a really revealing and very interesting statistic because what it reveals is that there are many more patients who clearly see the need to consider using services like this in upcoming consults and weren't previously uh, members of OpenPay and subsequently through this process are guided to and then and then if they still wish to, to opt in and, uh, and sign up and get ready for their upcoming consult. And then lastly, we saw um, real growth to our, um, our practice members. They saw um, increased in revenue and they saw patients being able to take up care plans, the very kind of care plans that we heard uh, Michael talking about earlier, where you suddenly discover you have a procedure that you need and you're worrying about whether you can fund those procedures. You now know you have the option um, to proceed and take up that very important healthcare advice that's available to you. And that was a key, a key kind of outcome. Next slide. All right, so um, um, <clears throat> where are we heading? What are, what are Michael and I and OpenPay and the first group doing? So what the next phase looks like is that we are now um, rolling out our combined services and introducing these combined services to both our existing healthcare network and OpenPay's existing healthcare network. What that will result in, of course, is um, hopefully increased um, adoption by um, customers who aren't yet customers of MyHealth First to come onto the MyHealth First platform. It'll result in many more of our customers who aren't already OpenPay members to potentially sign up and become OpenPay um, 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 merchants uh, or healthcare providers using OpenPay as a result. Um, and so we do see that this is going to drive some pretty interesting value in just uh, marketing and introducing this really valuable service to our existing network of healthcare providers between both companies. Um, in addition to that, um, we'll be working on preparing and rolling out the same capability onto our Pet Yeti platform now that we've seen what works and we understand the value that can be created and making further improvements with the insights that we've gathered. And so we will be bringing the same service and capability into the um, vet services market and pet services market um, in Australia as well. And then lastly, you know, we'll obviously be, be collaborating carefully in terms of promoting this to the broader market. I mentioned that there are about 50,000 potential practices across the sectors that um, open pay are focused on in healthcare and that we are also quite dominant in and very active in as an organization. That strong alignment means that, the, that combining 
um, both of our sales and marketing energies and efforts and teams to driving strong adoption um, of this service to both the healthcare providers and importantly for the benefit of consumers is where we're headed. And we certainly expect to see results come through um, in Q4 and beyond as a result of that kind of work. Uh, Michael, feel free to uh, add anything further um, and then we'll kind of head to um, questions as, um, as needed. Yeah, thanks, Klaus. Just to add one point, and you have uh, put it out very, very uh, rightly. Um, I think what our joint vision is to create a healthcare ecosystem in Australia, kind of to match supply and demand for great healthcare services and make it easy for patients to access the treatment they need and, um, and for healthcare providers to provide these patients with the best possible experience and, um, and creating kind of loyalty with them for them to come back and kind of build also this relationship with their me medical practitioner uh, over time. So I think a fantastic alignment and build, kind of building on the strength of two companies, what I said before, to make one plus one free. Absolutely. So thank you, Jana, for the Q&A. Thank you, Michael and Klaus. Now we have a few questions that have already been submitted through email before the session. We've got some coming through online. I can see that people are putting their hands up. We're not using that function today. So if you do want to ask a question, can I ask that you put it into the Zoom Q&A function at the ribbon at the bottom of the screen? Now, having a look at the time, we do have around 15 to 18 minutes that we can go through on the questions. The first question I'm going to throw out to both of you, how did the partnership come about? Like who found who? Yeah, it, it's interesting. We um, both had a mutual partnership with Provision, which is the largest optometry buying group in Australia. And this is how, kind of how the introduction happened. And then we initiated the discussion with uh, First Group due to their really strong presence in the optometry market to start with. And then Klaus and I talking, we became quite quite quickly aware that um, the First Group's My Health First platform could really add considerable value um, to our business and to First Group's business. And um, this, and obviously also adding the, the benefits to patients and practices and this is how the whole exciting journey started. I can't add anything more to that. That's um, perfectly covered. I mean, the two, we also discovered very early, very quickly, I think, that both teams um, were singing from the same hymn book. We had similar values, strong alignment, and engaged very well right from the outset. And I think that has led well to where we are today and where we're heading forward. Great. And what about due diligence? What was the selection process like? Can you give us some information around that? First of all, partnerships are very, very important to open pay as, as for first group. And um, we rely in kind of expanding our business now from a, from a sector perspective, from a value perspective for consumers, patients in that example, healthcare providers or merchants in, in other verticals. We, we, we plan for these partnerships very, very carefully. The, the main um, kind of criteria which we applied also to the first group was a strong focus on putting the patient at the center of what we do every time, every day, every minute, really important. As Klaus said, really sharing this common vision and values. Secondly, also the strong and um, flexible technical platforms, which we have in first group as well, to combine the two smartly and, um, and then delivering value, value right away. And then obviously first groups, um, market leadership in key healthcare segments, which we matched up with now and um, where we know we can really create distinct value um, for the key stakeholders, including our shareholders ultimately. So that's what we applied. And we found this all very well confirmed now since we have integrated and launched. And this is why we decided to go a bit faster and, and broader and, and do this now. So um, that's how we, we came uh, to this uh, great partnership. Yeah, and we went to great lengths to talk to our customers to understand their motivation and interest in offering um, these buy now, pay later services to market, and in particular, um, open pays kind of position in kind of key sectors. And so it became very obvious very, very quickly that there was really strong alignment between the two companies, not only capabilities, but in the way in which we thought about the market and the way in which we wanted to make sure that patients were always first and that healthcare providers were being properly supported. 
Thanks. Now this one's more about the platform and maybe I'll throw this one to Michael first. Why did OpenPay partner with First Group rather than building their own software? It's a good question and we are a tech company so you would uh, suggest we could have done it ourselves but I think we, we wouldn't have done it as beautifully as First Group have. They are really very experienced, experienced provider of payment <coughs> platforms. We are a very experienced provider of uh, buy now, pay later, payment and digital lending platform. And I, as I said before, I strongly believe creating customer value and shareholder value is really about partnerships and combining the, the mutual strength and adding the one and the one to make three out of it. And, and I think this is what we have been doing. And uh, it's just leveraging on other partner strength and it has worked um, exceptionally well. And this is how we, we look at um, partnerships and kind of adjacent capabilities to inform the growth of our business more broadly. Yeah, people often think that <clears throat> what we do is easy. Um, we've spent 10 years getting to where we are, integrating now with some 50 different practice management software systems. And the underlying, what we what you see on the front end as a consumer looks really simple, but the sophistication of what we've built, the investment that we've made in the way our services work and interact with patients and healthcare providers and their systems is really where the where the value lies. And so, you know, OpenPay have their core competency, we have our core competency and aligning the two of them together makes a lot of sense. Um, I've seen other companies try to build what we do and fail. Um, we know it's more difficult than people realise. <clears throat> And I suppose this is about the partnership and we've got a few questions that have come through on the reaction to the partnership. But what was the data that encouraged you both to move to the next steps ahead of time? Klaus, if, if I may start and, uh, and, and passing uh, over to you, I think and probably we have this, a similar approach to, to this question. It's really listening to the, to the customer, which is the, the patient and the healthcare provider. And those who had been kind of amongst the, the first 60 healthcare providers and the patients using them told us, and that, look, can we, can we use this in more circumstances of our personal health or our, um, our vet's health? And, um, and other healthcare providers who had heard about the, the, the initial 60 wanted to come on board as well. So really listening to the customer was the, the first driver. And then also obviously looking into the numbers the, the plan numbers per practice, the patients per practice and per visit who used um, our combined offer um, started strong and then increased very strongly. So we were encouraged by the voice of the customer and the numbers to take that earlier and, um, and, and broaden out. Yeah, look, it's interesting. They, I mean, I, you know, I've mentioned some of the statistics and outcomes of the pilot, but I think what was resoundingly clear was we only received positive feedback from our healthcare providers and patients, only positive feedback. We didn't receive a single source of negative feedback from anybody. And, um, and that, I think, was very revealing in a, in a pilot program like this that, that, um, that, you know, all we could see was was organisations and patients and everyone appreciating what we're doing and the value that we're creating. And I think that that led to um, us making this decision earlier. Great. Now, I am going to group a few questions here together because we've got a lot of them coming through online. And a lot of them are around the revenue models. So if I just throw it out there, maybe to you, Michael, first, how does the revenue model work? And then we can have Klaus adding in a bit of comment later. It's a good question. So I think that the, the basic principle which we applied is really <clears throat> aligning kind of the, the pricing and the revenue model with the value we create. And, and starting really with the healthcare providers, they see significant benefits because they get additional business and they provide even more importantly, the patient with what they need and kind of affordable terms to, um, don't do, to not get into financial stress, but just uh, spread the repayment over a longer period of time. Patients, use this service and um, they get the best health quality and um, would not feel they would need to compromise on what is the most important thing in life, which is probably people's and families and pets health. Mm -hmm. So I think we have from that perspective also, obviously, as we discussed, um, found significant value in delivering that service to the market for our two companies. 
first increased adoption for uh, first group across the healthcare uh, marketplace. And we see an increase in practice acquisition and plan utilization. So what we have agreed is um, um, a revenue share uh, model um, where, where uh, first group get a kind of a, a clip of uh, open pace plan origination. And that's how the whole mechanism works. We also have committed on both sides to continue to kind of co-fund co -fund marketing initiatives and continue to build out different kind of features on the platform, but also how we educate, for instance, the healthcare providers and create even more awareness in the broader market of, uh, of our combined offer to, to patients. That's kind of how it works, a revenue share agreement with very positive outcomes for both parties. Yeah, and, and we obviously get more customers signing up to My Health First on our standard commercial terms. And so we do expect to increase our footprint in collaboration with our partner OpenPay. Great, and this one sort of follows into it. You did mention the co-funding on marketing there, Michael. What OPEX and CAPEX is required to roll this out and how is that going to be shared? First of all, I think um, in the way how we have built our respective platforms, it was quite straightforward to connect them, to make them one comprehensive service end to end from booking to, to payment, if you like, and, and what the healthcare provider really need to put it out to their, to their patients. So I think there was a very limited initial investment required to, to make that happen. But I think that the major drivers now for our continued investment into this partnership and growing the business is really marketing, sales, and technology. And we have uh, committed to a co-funding model to kind of, as we did, did it now, kind of a bit ahead of time, deciding we will move earlier than anticipated see together what value have we created, what opportunity do we see. Klaus talked about the numbers of kind of um, healthcare practices, which are still kind of not um, kind of connected into that network or ecosystem. And um, this determines how we co-fund then the, um, the activities which we plan across marketing, sales and tech. Yes, yeah, so the way I think about it is both organisations had budgeted to invest um, certain amounts of sales and marketing resources into growing each other's presence in the market. By combining those efforts and those investments, um, we end up, um, we believe we're going to get a stronger and better result from doing that. Great. And if we have a look at the next question, it's probably a little bit aligned to that as well. That's what are the key operational metrics for you here that will be able to track your success? From our perspective, and, and then over to you, uh, Klaus, our, our model builds really on, on active healthcare providers first who offer their kind of this, this product to their patients and then patients like it they use it and they sign plans. And um, this is how the, the business develop active healthcare providers, active patients, active plans. This translates an into total transaction value and then results in revenue and then further down the, the bottom line to uh, profitability on, on our end midterm as for the broader business. Um, we have seen from the very beginning and uh, now a very strong interest uh, from the, the kind of the um, approached healthcare providers to be part of it. And this is what we will extend now and um, have seen also on the back of those who we have started with very strong patient interests, active patients using it, and then obviously the respective plans. So that's what we measure on our end as we do in, in any other vertical. And this translates then into the key financial metrics, which then inform the, the con commercial um, outcome over time. So that's what we how we look at it. And um, Klaus and I, we have set some expectations for ourselves uh, mutually with this partnership. And we sit together very regularly and kind of reflect on what we can do to, to increase, to improve, to pivot, and um, kind of being in line with our expectations. And so far, I would say we have exceeded in the first few months what we had expected. And this is why we take it further. Yeah. Right. And and, um, and we, we monitor very, very closely patient feedback on their experience with the service. And as a general rule, we operate at a net promoter score of 70 um, as a company, which is extremely, extremely excellent or good in global terms. And so monitoring, as Michael says, patient feedback and practice feedback throughout this process is fundamentally key to making sure that we continue to deliver the service um, in the right way. 
I suppose onto that, there's a few questions coming through the feed about the current feedback or how you think the market will react to the partnership. Uh, you're obviously keeping a close eye on it. Is there anything more that you'd like to add there? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind adding that um, people, uh, investors need to realise and remember that healthcare providers are adopting these services now. There are thousands of healthcare businesses today that are using buy now, pay later services. And the reason they're using them is because patients want them. Um, all, all we're doing here is enabling and making that journey, that patient experience a simpler uh, and better one. And like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, there's no, it's of no value having a patient discover at the point that they're meant to make in the payment, that there's a payment option here that they weren't aware of. And so making them aware earlier is all we're doing. Yes, there's a lot of sophistication around that, a lot of sensitivity with how, we, how we're delivering it, but, uh, but that's what we're doing in this journey. And I think, um, you know, it's just really important to remember that, you know, this is, this is a service that practices already offer today. And just to echo on, on, on Mao's point, I think the market has been crying out for a long while for a better solution for patients when they really need help. And in my view, um, credit cards haven't been a great solution to the problem because you can incur very high interest rates further down the track and, and other schemes have kind of imposed quite cumbersome duties on, on medical staff to kind of chase their patients and, and kind of get the invoices and reconcile the treatments with the incoming payments. This hasn't been great either. And also looking at the, within the buy now pay the space, I think there has been, a, has been a lot of offers in that space lately for convenience only. But I think here we have the opportunity together to really solve a problem for the, for the patient, which is with this dental example before, something unforeseen, you have budgeted maybe for 100 bucks for a, a, a clean, and then it's 5,000 for an implant or root canal surgery or whatever that would be. And this is where we can immediately come in and solve it for them. So they guess, get the best quality for what they deserve from a health perspective, and they can afford it. And, um, and we ensure that it's a smooth journey and, uh, and used rightly. And I think we, we just close a gap in the market which has been there for many, many years. Thank you. Now we've got around three minutes left. Let's hope we can get through two more questions. So the next one would be, what are the next um, execution milestones or data points that the market can look out for? Look, I think we have quite nicely outlined what the, what the way forward is now really opening up to now thousands of, of healthcare providers with their respective patients, which will exponentially increase the, the value which we create and the value which we will get from, um, from this uh, partnership and focusing not only on, on, on human healthcare, but also veterinary healthcare um, as an addition. I think these are the milestones and the announcements which the investor community can, 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 can wait for and, and look, look forward. And um, we will keep obviously the market updated. And, um, and then there's other probably opportunities, uh, Klaus, also over to you. I know you are in other kind of adjacent areas where this combined solution could work really well and us as well. So it's really go step by step. What we have now announced and started to drive really well to establish as well as a market leading proposition and then take it from there. And I think that really flows into the last question of the day. Does this relationship have potential for further expansion into other verticals beyond health? And, and I, I did see in the in the question area other verticals and other geographies was a was an was an additional kind of component to that. Uh, Michael, do you want me to chime in on that? Yeah, why not? Yeah. So look, um, the alignment between our two businesses is very strong, and um, and as um, some investors would be aware, we don't just operate in healthcare. We do have capability and customers in other sectors, and so there certainly is opportunity for us to, to expand what we're doing both here in Australia and New Zealand where we operate and potentially internationally. Um, and so I think as we progress in the market here, we'll consider um, opportunities downstream as we kind of get there. I mean, the Pet Yeti solution that we mentioned earlier, we expect to start launching that into the market sometime in late April. Um, and so, you know, we, we're moving quickly 
um, um, and getting on with doing what we're doing. We've obviously got in the background a lot of um, requirements just as well in relation to COVID um, that we also support in this country. Um, but the work we're doing here with, um, with OpenPay is really valuable and important. And, you know, we're going to move as fast as both organisations can to progress our efforts into um, different market segments here in Australia and New Zealand and then um, potentially consider as appropriate um, you know, what we do elsewhere. Certainly what we've built as a company lends itself well to being deployed in other geographies, but we don't have any immediate plans to do so. Well, said. All right. well thank you very much. Um, I will now pass back to Michael to be able to give some closing comments, but I would say that if you've added any of the questions into the feed and you haven't got the answers you require, please feel free to reach out to us directly on the information on the screen and we'll be able to answer those questions for you. So now back to Michael Idle, OpenPay CEO and Managing Director for some closing comments. Thank you, Juliana, and thanks, Klaus, for co-hosting this uh, great call. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending our investor briefings call today. We are looking forward to updating you on the further progress of um, our partnership as outlined. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to Klaus and myself uh, directly, and we are happy to answer further questions. Thanks again. Have a good day. Thank you.